Hey there friends and welcome to a update on the eruption in Iceland. It is November 25th, about 3 p.m. here at Mountain Standard Time. I'm actually on vacation with family in Arizona near Sedona, uh, but I thought I'd put together an update for you, get you updated on things going on. As always, I appreciate uh, the vigilant efforts of Amanda Joe in keeping me up to date so I can provide you a little bit of information as well. Um, the eruption is still going on. I guess I haven't introduced myself. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I might be a little bit backlit on the video there, so I apologize if I kept it kind of small because uh, you don't really need to see me anyway. But the eruption is still going on in Iceland, although it has dwindled down quite a bit, as you can see from uh, the live cam shot there. Um, we had three events that were you know, we had the big fissure system that had dwindled down to three focused locations. And of those three, it's mainly the northern one that's really outputting a substantial or any sort of significant amount of lava. The middle one, which was the main eruptive vent that was producing the flow that was moving towards the Blue Lagoon, that eruptive vent seems to have died down for the most part, although that lava flow still is molten in the subsurface and still is progressing a little bit to the west, uh, but we expect that to kind of dwindle down. And the south vent seems to have died down uh, pretty much as well. I'll give you a couple webcam views here. I've got my remote set up, so I apologize if this is not as slick as what you're used to. Um, but I thought I'd show you a couple of views here. This is several hours ago, but it does show in the daylight the northern eruptive vent. You can see other parts of the fissure system degassing here on the middle ground. And then if we kind of move this ahead, a bit more towards sunset. Um, what we'll see here is a couple of things that we'll touch on at some point. Yeah, there's the eruption going on. Uh, nice view here of what they're doing. Uh, I'll get to this later, but they're re-establishing some of the power lines that were lost in this last eruption, building up a base for these power lines to sit on uh, that's elevated above the flow front there. And I think what this camera is doing um, if we go to the live view is mainly focusing, at least last time I checked and just getting this together. Uh, it looks like they're kind of looking at some other things there. Um, parts of the flow field there, but they were looking at earlier, like here on some of these efforts that they have going on to reestablish the power line. So let's go ahead and get you up to date. And as always, uh, when I miss a few days like I did this weekend, it's it's... You know, I'm doing this for not just for you folks, although that's a big motivation, but also for myself. I feel like putting everything together that Amanda Joe sends me and, and doing one of these updates is helpful to me in kind of uh, connecting the dots and seeing what's happening here. So here's our flow field map. At least this was as of yesterday. So this is for November 24th. Uh, it's probably pretty much the same for today. There's shown in red those three vents that we had from the eruption. These two southerly vents seem to have pretty much dwindled down to not much. There's occasional like, you know, little pulse of, of lava spatter here and there, but these seem to be, um, if not dead, quickly approaching that, that state. And then this northern vent still erupting, still active, although it's decreased in activity as well. Northern vent though poses no real uh, threat because most of its lava is actually going off to the east here. So it's pushing uh, and feeding a lava flow that's heading off into this direction, away from any infrastructure, out into this open ground uh, up against these hills over here. This one here, this flow was uh, mainly fed by this middle vent. And that was the flow that we looked at uh, over the weekend and in my last update on Friday, this is the one that took out the Blue Lagoon parking lot, which is down here. And then it looks like it progressed a few hundred meters or so to the west. And it's pretty much stalled. It hasn't moved any, any further since then. Uh, but you can see it did take out this back road that comes into the Blue Lagoon area. Of course, this main road here was taken out as well. As far as I've heard, the pipeline is still intact, although they've sent um, some warnings out to people in the area to kind of conserve hot water. And, and I think they're, they're just watching that closely. And that's one piece of critical infrastructure. You can also see that the flow field was up against the berm here, and it did actually get high enough that it was near the top of the berm. And so this is actually where they're uh, currently spraying a lot of water. They're cooling down this lava flow, even though it's not being fed significantly from the vent. They're cooling down the edge of this uh, lobe of this lava flow here to keep it from rising any further along the berm. Uh, we'll talk more about the berms later on, but they are planning on raising them up a little bit higher in light of the fact that the lava flow is uh, 
approached the height of the berm there. So this is our flow field map as things stand now. Uh, the berms did a really awesome job. Um, undoubtedly, this lava, if had the berms not been there, the power plant in the Blue Lagoon, most of that area would be under some amount of, of lava. So um, really great mitigation measures there that at least so far have worked quite nicely. We'll go to the Met Office update here. Um, maybe get that a little bit bigger for you there, but I'll put a link to this in the description so you can follow along with that. Uh, okay, eruption maintains significant power. This is an eruption from today, about 345 local time. Activity is not decreased as quickly as it did in previous eruptions, so it's, it's maintained a little bit more vigor than what we saw at least with the August eruption. Rate of flowing lava is comparable to the strongest eruptions at Fagradalsfjall. Uh, advancing lava flow may be exerting stress on the protective barriers around the power plant. Um, and so let's see a couple things here. Uh, they've got one plot that shows uh, some of the volcanic tremor. These are this is sim seismograms, earthquakes basically um, in a way, but th this is showing a, a marked drop off here on the 24th yesterday. And so uh, this more or less indicates these green and purple lines show more or less the power of the eruption. Uh, here it is at the onset of the eruption, dropping down a little bit, kind of ramping up a little bit, and then you can see a, a steady drop, but then more of a precipitous drop here. Um, going on with the update, northernmost vents most active. We've talked about that. Its lava flow goes off to the east. Occasionally, let's see, overnight sporadic splashes of lava were observed above the rim of the southernmost vent, but no activity was observed there today. So that one seems to be, if not dead, at least uh, dying or maybe in a coma. The, similarly, the middle vent, which was the most active during the first stage of the eruption, experienced a significant decrease in activity yesterday and no activity is visible today on the live webcams. Uh, lava has been traveling westward from that, that middle one and it's slowed and cooled on the surface, uh, but it can still flow beneath that solidified crust. And so that's what we're worried about there is even though the, the vent has died down, the flow field itself can actually um, continue on for sometimes days or several days really. Uh, and then they got some numbers here uh, total volume of lava reached about 43 million cubic meters, uh, covering about 8.5 square kilometers. And that's about 65% of the volume from the last eruption, which lasted about two weeks, that one in August. So less volume than what was erupted from that first eruption. Uh, land continues to subside, although it's slowed down quite a bit. I'll show you the GPS here in a second. Uh, and that's pretty much it for at least the most recent hazard update. I don't want to necessarily bore you by scrolling back through some of the past ones, even if those were some that came in over the weekend and, and ones that I missed. Earthquakes, dead quiet. Uh, there's Grindavik right here. Nary uh, earthquake to be had anywhere here uh, over the last 24 hours. Let's throw in the small earthquakes. Yeah, a negative 0.4. Uh, not even in the eruption area, a little bit to the west there. So earthquakes quite quiet as we would expect it to be uh, while the eruption is continuing. That magma conduit is open. The GPS is starting to look a little more interesting, and this will be something to follow in the days uh, to come. So if we come down here to uh, the Svartsengi station, uh, let's see where are we going here. Oh, I'm too far down the page, sorry. Um, look at the, we'll look at the eight hour run and we'll also look at the uh, four hour run. So here's Fart Sengi. And what we'll see here, if we get down to that uh, last graph here, which shows the uplift. Oh good, my little face is out of the way. But you can see the uplift prior to the eruption. Uh, the eruption occurred on November 20, what was it, the 21st? Can't remember now, anyway, 20th. Um, and then you can see the down drop there and these data points as the eruption was taking place. But now you can see the last couple cluster of points and um, we don't want to define a trend from a point or a few points. So this is way too early to make the call, but you can see at least the hint there of it starting to stabilize in terms of down drop um, elevation. And so we'll have to see going forward. We're still erupting lava. It's still too early to make any sort of inferences, but it will be interesting to see how this plays out over the next few days in, along with what the eruption does. Will the eruption last several days? Will it die out completely and lava is no longer being pumped to the surface? That last data point there shows a little bit of uplift, but again, one data point does not a trend make. Uh, if we come down to the 
four hour run for the same station. So rather than a data point being generated every eight hours, you can also select uh, data every four hours. So if we go into the same GPS stations data for the four hour run, this time I will move my little face here, which is probably backlit and not very helpful anyway. If you hear helicopters overhead, I apologize. I've got scenic flights in this area over Sedona. But now you can see the down drop over with the four hour run. And now, you know, there's, there's more data points here. So I think it defines a little bit better of a trend. It, I think it hints to at least some stabilization um, or close to stabilization. So neither uplifting nor down dropping overall. Um, but again, it's still pretty early, so it'll be interesting to see how the GPS plays out moving forward. Um, one of our good friends, uh, Hordor Krislifsson, who does great work with his drone, has posted a very awesome, and there's all his contact information there, so if you want to follow him on Instagram or look at some of his great work. This is a, a 360 drone shot he did, and this was from, uh, let's see, the 23rd? Yeah, 23rd, so... A, two days ago, I guess. But there's the eruption taking place over here. Back when we had probably two, at least two or three vents open. The main flow field coming along the berm to the west. You can see the berm here. Blue Lagoon, power plant. Um, the location of the parking lot was here, so that's completely gone now. And then you can pull this over and see how far that flow field got out to the west, covering up that back road that comes in from the west side um, to from Gorendovic into the Blue Lagoon area. Uh, and then let's see what else we can see if we just kind of, yeah, he does a great job just um, taking this 360 image and then uh, adding some annotations to it so you can kind of get a sense for things here. So yeah, just kind of a nice view there of the eruption. Uh, you can swing it all the way over here to uh, Gorendovic and areas even to the west. So nice work there. A um, couple other things in the news from Amanda Joe. So I mentioned and I showed you some of the, the uh, live webcam videos of them putting the masts up for the power poles. So, you know, in typical Icelandic fashion, uh, they got right to it and they're trying to re, uh, I guess, erect and um, establish these electricity poles. Uh, in this area. I'm not sure if, if there's, I haven't heard that there's electricity out specifically in any area. They may have backup generators or some sort of backup system there, but a little little news story here about them reestablishing that. Um, this one was fun because the Google Translate gave this one a fun title. So I don't know what the title was exactly in Icelandic, but translated to English with Google Translate, you get can't knock the soda off the table right away. Um, mainly article looking at how quickly uh, this eruption might, how, you know, if, if eruption is going to go on longer, it's, you know, till, still too early to say, of course. Um, you know, there's some quotes in here from Benedict Ofixen at the Met Office, who always, I think, does a nice job with uh, the information he provides. Yeah, he says, eruption is more powerful for longer than the other eruptions in the Sunuk Crater series. It's therefore by no means possible to <laughs> knock this soda off the table right away, but it's decreasing. So basically, um, too early to say that the eruption is over, but definitely it's decreasing a little bit. So um, hard to say, you know, we could maintain the level of output that we're seeing right now for uh, days, maybe even weeks to come, or it could continue to dwindle and our vents are shut down pretty quickly. Uh, this final article here talks about the defensive berms and how these are going to be raised up another three or four meters in the days and weeks to come. Um, so there's some interesting quotes in here. Uh, the height of the ramparts here in this section has been reached, so the lava reached the same height as the defensive berm, so that necessitates bringing the berm up higher, because if there's another flow that comes in, manages to get up on top of that flow, that could raise it even higher, or you could have that existing flow actually inflate a little bit, and that could be problematic as well. And so um, they're working on that kind of around the clock to uh, help help it reestablish things. And then uh, finally, um, and I don't have an answer for this, but the, the last thing I heard about the Blue Lagoon was that they are going to reopen on the 29th. And so, which is Friday of this week, um, which is great news for them as a business and for the employees. Uh, I haven't really quite figured out how they're doing that. <laughs> like exactly how 
Now, there's multiple roads in this area, um, and maybe they expect the road will be reestablished here, but I'm not quite sure they can in that timeline. I mean, the lava is still there. So I don't know if they're bringing people in uh, this south road through Grindavik and then somehow bringing them in by the power plant and into the Blue Lagoon area. So I'm not sure exactly how the visitors and guests of the Blue Lagoon are getting there, but I'm sure they figured that out and I just haven't seen exactly um, what's transpiring there. So if someone knows, maybe they can leave that in the comments and and we can all learn together. So um, anyhow, folks, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll sign off here with this. Uh, thanks again for joining me. Hopefully this was helpful, definitely helpful for me just putting things together, seeing what's been happening over the weekend. Uh, we're here on vacation f until Friday, then we're going to head up to the Grand Canyon for part of the day before we start driving back and we'll get back on Saturday. So I will try to put together uh, another update later this week if there's some things going on that uh, warrant such uh, such an update. So otherwise, thanks for your time. Thanks for your support of the channel and we'll see you next time. Take care, folks.